Harrison. I'm the media relations manager for Crimson Trace. I first became professionally involved in firearms when I joined the British Army. I served eight years as an infantry officer. Yeah, I have this reputation of being a fairly fierce competitor, but really I'm just out the range having fun, hanging with some friends and tearing it down. We've assembled some of the best experts in the firearms industry. Julie Gollard. Todd Jarrett. Richard Mann. Michael Bain. Dave Starrett. And myself, Ian Harrison. Here at Gunsight Academy, one of the world's foremost training facilities. We're going to use the range complex here to show you real life scenarios and tactics so that you can get the Crimson Trace Laser's Edge. If you're looking for that peripheral threat out there, um, you're not going to be focused on your front sight when you're doing that. So having that you know, target-based laser system where you, know, you have the dot on the target. My experience as a, as a police officer, taking your focus off of that threat onto something else is probably the absolute hardest thing there is to yeah. do. My name's Dave Starin. I work at Gunsight Academy. I was a law enforcement officer for 20 years. My first experience with laser was as a SWAT officer. When we do things like work behind ballistic shields, we've got a very narrow field of view and you can't actually get a traditional sight picture. And we found the lasers work very well in that conjuncture. Lasers can be very beneficial in a wide spectrum. No matter what your experience is, your background, or your purpose to use them for, there are applications where they can be extremely useful. You know, the first tendency is often to throw a revolver a woman's way. Yeah. And that may work for a lot of women. And I've carried a revolver for a number of years. But I prefer something small and light, but something that I can manipulate like the MMP steel. Yeah. It's something that I can work with, be accurate with, and be confident with. And that's the most important thing. My name is Julie Golub. I've been a shooter pretty much most of my life. I started shooting when I was 14, competitively. I uh, joined the military in 1995 as military police, but I went straight to the Army Marksmanship Unit, and I was the first and only female there. One of the things you have to be when you're working the street as a cop is you got to be cognizant of everything around you. you. You can't get focused on a single threat, and being able to put your red dot on the threat and know that you've got that threat covered in case you have to pull the trigger, but still let your peripheral vision pick up around you so other threats so you can move. I mean, it makes a big difference. I'm Richard Mann. I'm a freelance gun writer and firearms consultant. We've, we've talked about concealed carry. We, that, that topic keeps coming up, keeps coming up. The audience has changed. And, and, and I don't think any of us were really prepared for this flood of concealed carry holders that have come into, into the gun culture. You know, we, we came up with guns. We, we grew up with them. We have a really good, we've shot competitively for mm -hmm. years. But I, when I'm talking to new concealed carry holders, the questions they have are questions that, that, that we had in the beginning too. It's just been a long time since the beginning. But I, you know, I think as an industry, it, it surprised us. I'm Michael Bain, and for the last 10 years, I've been working on television doing guns. My flagship show, Shooting Gallery, is now in its 13th season. You know, there's been a profound change in the gun culture in the last, say, five to 10 years. Gun culture version 2.0 is driven by concealed carry, by the training community, and by the practical shooting sports, a grip-mounted laser gives you, as a civilian, an advantage. You're going to use it at a time when the stress level is going to be through the ceiling. You need any advantage that you can give yourself. And I feel very strongly that that laser is a critical, critical advantage. Practice and practice and practice safely, dry, no ammunition in the room. The laser will teach you how to grip the gun. It doesn't matter whether the laser's on a grip or on the trigger guard. It always works perfect in low light situations. 
And finally, Crimson Tray strongly recommends that you get training. And so do I. The training is out there if you are willing to look for it. I'm Todd Jarrett. I have spent almost 30 years of my life shooting, and I still shoot roughly around 85,000 rounds a year. I would say from 1986 until 1996, I hound a gun four hours a day for 10 years. We've touched on uh, different sized guns and, and some of the benefits of Crimson Trace. Let's talk about the difference between a red and a green laser. I'm starting to see green a lot more prevalent. Yeah, for the longest time, red's been the only way to go. Um, and that's a, like a, six, a 635 nanometer laser. Um, green is becoming more prevalent, um, and green has a lot of technical difficulties to overcome. For example, they draw a lot of power. And the reason they do that is instead of just a, just a laser diode and a lens, you then have an 808 nanometer diode, you have a frequency doubler chip, you have a collimator, well, you have a lens. But, but humans evolved in nature, and the most prevalent color in nature is, guess what? The one we can see the easiest.